Hi guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about how to burn belly fat step by step. Now, in a lot of other videos, uh, I talk about specific parts of weight loss, how to burn fat, all different aspects. In this video, we're going to put everything together, okay? There's really three basic sections. The basics of what to do, things to add the speed up weight loss, and things to avoid to speed up weight loss, okay? So let's talk about the basics first. Um, and some of this might be just repetitive, but if you've never seen a video from me, this will be very helpful, make notes. And I'll put videos down below for a lot of the summaries of other videos that you can get detailed information on each thing, because I've probably done videos on each separate item. Basics, two to three meals a day, okay? You can start off with three meals, and then you want to go to two. You don't want to graze all day, because every time you eat, you spike this hormone that prevents weight loss called insulin, okay? So eating in general will stimulate that. So we want minimum three meals a day um, or maximum three, three, meals a, three meals a day, minimum two meals a day. So some people go to two, and I'll get more into that when we get into this next part right here, which is no snacking. So when you have um, six meals a day or uh, five meals a day, and they're small and they're spread out, or you're snacking between meals, you're going to spike insulin. We, we don't want to do that. That's going to create a big problem for you. So removing the snacking is vital, uh, very, very important. Um, it's called intermittent fasting, okay? Now, right here, I suggest you start with three meals and then do that for a while, get into ketosis or fat burning, and then go to two meals if you can do it, unless you can't do it because you're working out hard and you need three meals a day. Um, I would say it's 50-50. If you're sedentary, you can get by with two meals a day and you will lose some serious weight in your midsection. Insulin is the hormone that is responsible for the midsection weight. So three meals, no snacking. Okay, as far as protein, three to six ounces based on your size, your uh, stress level, you're gonna eat a little more protein. You don't wanna go too much because too much protein will stimulate insulin. Okay, three to six ounces per meal. Now, if you're not hungry for protein, let's say for dinner, then don't eat it. So, but this is kind of an, an average. Now, next one, seven cups of veggies. Why? Because we need to flush out all this fat that's gonna be coming out through your liver. All the fat through the body has to go through the liver, and if you don't consume enough vegetables, you can end up with a fatty liver. Plus, vegetables give us the potassium we need. We need about 4,700 milligrams. That's a lot. So that's about seven to 10 cups. Very few people do that, but you wanna consume the vegetable first and have a huge salad and then a small amount of protein. Um, now, next one is no sugar. This is a given because sugar increases insulin, and also I'm talking about the hidden sugars the breads, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, muffins, alcohol, okay? So we wanna cut the sugar and refined carbs out. Next one, healthy fats. This is essential because when you consume fat at the end of the meal, that allows you to go to the next meal without being so hungry and craving and starving that your blood sugars crash. So this basically allows you to do three meals or two meals without being hungry thereby not increasing insulin. Fat is one of the only things that does not increase insulin. It's neutral, so this is safe. If you're worried about calories, I put some links down below. Okay, these are the basics. Now, if we want to speed things up, we can add some MCTs to the diet. That's like in coconut oil, um, medium chain triglycerides. That will increase fat burning. Next one is potassium. Why? Because at the heart of weight loss, we want to avoid insulin. And so most people that can't lose weight have too much insulin. They have insulin resistance, so we wanna fix that. Potassium is one of the ways to do that. You can consume all these vegetables or even take it in some supplement, potassium citrate, to actually heal the, ab uh, the aberration or dysfunction of insulin. Next thing is apple cider vinegar, why? Because the acid in apple cider vinegar called acetic acid does improve the output of in insulin. It reduces insulin, it improves insulin resistance, it lowers your blood sugars. So it's very good for diabetics. And take this one in the morning, one teaspoon with glass of water and one before bed or for with your dinner if you have digestive issues. Very important. Chromium, again, you can find a supplement with chromium to help your blood sugars. Chromium is a mineral that actually has been proven to help insulin. Again, keep it in check. Uh, B vitamins, another key thing, especially vitamin B1, 
for regulating insulin control and improving insulin resistance. Nutritional yeast is your go-to. Um, okay, next one is high intensity interval training. If you add high intensity full body resistance training, you're gonna spike growth hormone and you're gonna speed up weight loss. The key is short bursts of high intensity, lots of rest, okay? Again, I'll put some videos down below to get specifics on that, but this one is, this will just, this is it's the icing on the cake, okay? Next one is more sleep. Adding more sleep, why? Because growth hormone is triggered when you're sleeping and that is the primary hormone that stimulates fat burning, so more sleep. So if you could just take another, take a nap, sleep in longer, get an extra hour of sleep, that goes a long way. That's more important than high intensity interval training. Sleep is the key, okay? Now, next one is recovery. Making sure that if you are doing high intensity uh, interval training that you're recovering after, you're not doing it every day. Some people need to do it every other day, some people every third day, some people once a week, depending on how you feel when you work out. If you're fairly broken down, um, then you can't, you're overtraining, okay? So recovery is essential if you're um, exercising. Now, let's take a look at what you need to remove. This is just as important as this, okay? Remove any type of sleeping issues, insomnia, vital. Why? Because you're not gonna lose weight if you're not sleeping, all right? I put a video down below of what to do if you're not sleeping. There's a lot of things you can do. It's mainly stress. Bloating, if you're bloating, let's say you're consuming too much kale or uh, too much you know, cruciferous vegetables that you're not used to consuming and then you're bloating, that is going to slow down weight loss. So you're gonna to have to go back to the vegetables that you can digest and maybe even steam some until the bloating goes away. Uh, also, people consume too many nuts, that can create bloating. Again, we wanna eliminate anything that bloats you. Sometimes adding more apple cider vinegar or an acidifier for the stomach will help it or even a bile uh, salt. Purified bile salt. I'll put some links down below for bloating. Okay, menstrual cycle issues. If your cycle is two weeks out of the month, <laughs> you're not gonna lose weight because the high levels of estrogen. Estrogen blocks the thyroid, estrogen creates fat on the hips and the thighs, and we need to handle this cycle so it's really smooth. Again, I put a, a, a link down below of what to do for that. This is kind of like a, a little bit of an assessment for you to see what areas you have problems with, okay? Some of these don't apply. Okay, stress. Mainly, um, you wanna do, get a list of all the people you know that stress you out and avoid them for a while. You want to avoid the news. You want to avoid stressful situations. You wanna do um, certain activities. Uh, I recommend an acupressure for your body to pull stress out. You wanna do everything you can do to enhance the reduction of stress because cortisol is triggered and cortisol will stop your weight loss. So I will put some links down below. All right, MSG, what is that? Monosodium glutamate, that's in a lot of foods. Start looking at the labels. It's in, um, oh my gosh, it's in um, even cottage cheese, it's, unless it's organic. It's in all the fast food restaurants, I mean all their foods. It's in Chinese foods, but it's hidden as modified food starch, okay? Again, I'll put a video down there, very important. Restaurant foods, you don't know what you're getting, it's a crapshoot. There's so many things they put in that food that you have no idea and pr uh, primarily hidden sugars, MSG, to make it taste better. But inevitably, people go out to dinner way too much, and that is what's keeping them from losing weight. Not to mention, what do they bring you? They bring you bread, they bring you dessert, they bring you alcohol, okay? So it's really difficult to do this when you're going to restaurants. Next one is uh, avoid overtraining. If you're at a boot camp or you're working out too hard, and you're not recovering and you're not sleeping, you're not going to lose weight. You're gonna lose muscle mass. So this is very, very important, especially when you start out, because you're not used to it. Last thing is constipation. I have people that don't even go, um, like maybe they go once a, a week or once every two weeks. That is a serious constipation problem and that is gonna stop your weight loss. Again, I have a lot of videos on getting to the root cause of that, okay? I'll put them down below. So I just kind of summarize all the things that you need to look at in order to lose your stomach. It's comprehensive. Now you have the video as a checklist. Go ahead and apply this and put your comments below. Thanks for so much for watching.